I recently found a listing for a PC, which I, I just had to share with you. Because I think, unless you specifically recognize the product, you're not going to be able to guess what it's for. It has a starting price of 24,000 euros, which translates to about 26,000 US dollars. Uh, now, I did reach out to the company and I asked them, hey, would you guys mind sending one of these PCs over for a video? Uh, but surprise, surprise, they didn't reply. So what we're going to do instead in today's video is we're going to go onto their website and we're going to have a very close, detailed look at the pictures of the system. And then I'll have you guess what you think it's for in the comment section below, at which point I'll reveal its use case. And then the fun starts, because then we're going to go look at the marketing material for this PC, which is it's pretty next level. So with that, buckle up, because today's video is, is going to be a bit of a ride. <laughs> Now, before we have a look at the system, uh, just a quick note, I did Photoshop all of the branding of it for the initial first look because it kind of tells you what it is in the name. So I wanted to make it harder for you to guess, although I'll obviously tell you what the company's called later. Um, but yeah, let's have a look at the first picture, which is the outside of it. And it's admittedly very beautiful. You can see that there is a lot of aluminium. There's some ventilation drilled in the top. And then we have this minimalist logo on the front with what I hope is the most satisfying power button any human has ever pressed, considering the 24,000 euro asking price. Now, one thing to note with this picture is that this system does not seem to have standard server rack mounting. So just bear that in mind when we flip over to the picture of the inside. Now, this picture of the interior is the kind of thing that you wouldn't be able to leave young David alone with for any extended period of time, lest you massively impact global tissue supplies. <laughs> like, that is a beautiful interior. Now, the first thing that I notice about the inside of the system, aside from the fact that it doesn't have single channel RAM, which would have been just the absolute cherry on top, but aside from the huge amount of RAM, the cooling solution is very interesting because you can see that it is passive. There are no fans involved. Uh, there are just three heat pipes per CPU that draw heat away to this heatsink on the side of the case. Now, that heatsink is apparently solid copper, which that's pretty cool. I'm not going to lie, that really is pretty cool. But despite the fact that that is a solid copper heatsink, there are two CPUs under here. I don't know if that cooling is going to be enough, but when you find out what the system's for, you'll realize that maybe heat output's not going to be much of a problem for the system. Now, the company is very vague about the CPUs that are under there. The most information they give you is that they are 10 core, 20 thread Xeon CPUs. They don't tell you what Xeon CPUs they are. Now, going by the motherboard heatsink, that is an Asus Workstation motherboard. And I've actually gone and found it. It is this Asus Workstation C621E Sage Power motherboard, uh, which is a real thick boy motherboard with these two huge LGA, I think those are 3647 sockets, which does kind of help narrow down the CPUs because there are only three CPUs that can fit in this motherboard that have 10 cores and 20 threads. Editor David here, it's not technically true. Uh, there has been three generations of these Intel scalable Xeons. And in the second and third generation, there are a couple more 10 core variants littered in there. Although most of them seem like refreshes or Intel just shifting around product stacks. Still, I just thought I'd mention that. Uh, now the first one is this Intel Xeon Silver 4114, which is 10 cores, 20 threads, and it's an 85 watt CPU. And uh, they sell for about $700, or at least did when they came out. And then we have uh, the other option is just the T variant of that CPU. And then the other option is this one, which is an Intel Xeon Gold 5115, which has 10 cores, 20 threads, and a slightly higher core frequency. Now I'm kind of hoping that it has these in it just because of the pricing. Uh, it's a th it, me it means we're looking at about $2,400 for the CPUs that are in there and then about 800 Canadian dollars for the motherboard. So th that'll be about $3,000 for the motherboard and the two CPUs. Let's have a closer look at the RAM configuration here. It looks like there's a hell of a lot of RAM, but each of these sticks is a four gig stick of RAM, which they talk a lot about in the marketing material for the system. Uh, but it sounds like it's like 
just ECC memory, uh, but we'll, we'll get into that a bit later. Uh, that is a total of about 48 gigs, which is a lot of RAM, but it's not that much RAM for a 24,000 euro PC with two Xeons in it. And then there are also these two expansion cards, which uh, those are like M.2 slot cards so that you can put a bunch of like NVMe storage in there. And then just a quick final note on the system specs. I don't see a graphics card in there, which makes it clear that the system's performance is all about fast storage and CPU power. But anyway, let's have a quick look at the power supply, which is this whole side bit of the computer. Now it looks very impressive. We have these large capacitors very neatly laid out in a row, and then we have this massive toroidal transformer down here surrounded in wood. I'm assuming to deal with EMI, but I'm not sure. And then we also have a power supply for it down here, which seems to be aluminium as supposed to the copper heatsink for the CPUs. Uh, now, again, this looks really cool, but it's only a 400 watt power supply, which considering that we've got dual Xeons in this system is not a whole lot. And then it's fully proprietary. So yeah, you're, you're kind of stuck with it. Uh, so this is the shot of the IO, which has a brushed copper IO shield, which I'm not going to lie, looks really beautiful. <laughs> that is sick. Um, but it's interesting because you look at the IO and then you go and look at the picture of the IO for this motherboard on Amazon. And you'll notice that there are some ports missing. So they clearly designed this IO shield so that it covers up any ports that makes it look like poor people use the system, I'm guessing, right? Because it covers up the PS2 port with the USB 2 ports and the, uh, the onboard audio. So we don't need any of that for this system, although we do need redundant LAN. But without further ado, let's reveal what this obscene system was designed to do. It's called the Taiko Audio SG Extreme, and this $24,000 system with dual passively cooled Xeons in it and 48 gigs of RAM is a music storage server. This system is designed to run Rune on it, which is like music playing software. So this is like the server for that. And then you use an iPad running Rune on it, which then streams your lossless music files from the SGM Extreme to the digital to analog converter in your hi-fi setup that then converts the digital signal into an analog signal that feeds it to the amplifiers in your hi-fi. So as far as I understand it, this SGM Extreme is just a glorified NAS. In fact, if you go onto Rune's website, they actually tell you that you can run Rune Core on a Synology NAS, which is insane because for the 24,000 euro asking price, you just get two terabytes of internal storage, which is really not that much for a NAS, right? And in all fairness to Taiko Audio, uh, they don't actually charge you as much for additional storage as Apple does, which is kind of wild, to be honest. Uh, but still, it's that's a crazy amount of money for a storage server. Uh, but they also give you the option to spec Extreme USB, which costs, uh, it costs almost 2,000 euros. I, it, it's just USB that's more extreme. I guess it's got like anti-jitter stuff in it, I, I guess is the argument around that. Uh, but you can also spec up uh, legacy outputs, things like AES or SPDIF. Now, getting a SPDIF port on this system, which, funnily enough, uh, the motherboard actually comes with one, but to get the Taiko Extreme SPDIF, uh, the one that they didn't just block out with an IO shield, costs over 2,000 euro extra for a port that is already on the motherboard. So I wonder, I, <laughs> I would actually like to see, I wonder if that spec up just gives you access to the spit off on the spit F on the back. That would be amazing. <laughs> but now we get to what is almost definitely my favorite part about the system, which is the marketing material. Now, I want to preface this by saying that I am not an expert when it comes to digital audio reproduction, 
but I am a bit of an expert when it comes to identifying bullshit marketing, and this is some of the best I've ever seen. Um, so let's see what Taiko has to say for themselves. They say that the Taiko Audio SGM Extreme is a state-of-the-art music server designed to deliver the most realistic sounding live reproduction from stored music files. They then continue to say that they left no stone unturned when it comes to maximizing how much money you can charge for a NAS. Uh, but <laughs> basically, they continue to justify the decisions. They explain why they chose the hardware that is in this system. Starting off with the dual CPU design. Now the English is a bit difficult to follow there, but they're basically saying Rune is the best software to use with this server. And then they say that the choice to design a dual CPU system was for a large part fueled by finding a way around the impact of Rune's luxury interface on the sound quality. So they're saying that Rune is great, but because it has a really beautiful graphical user interface, you need two passively cooled Xeons. That's kind of what they're arguing there. I, I don't know, man. I feel like <laughs> that's, a, that's a veil thin justification for that. Because if you go onto Rune's website and you look at like the specs that they recommend for their software, uh, they tell you to buy things like this to use Rune on as a music server storage. You know, you buy an Intel NUC and then you plug a, a, a NAS into it and there you go, you'll have a great Rune experience. But according to Taiko, you need dual Xeons. Uh, but but it, 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 they, they continue, they've they explained it a bit more. With our groundbreaking custom allocation of processes, you can now have both. The best sound quality as well as the best user interface. What's more, due to the low amount of heat that's generated due to this design, you can expect much longer component life than a single CPU design. <laughs> yeah, there's gonna be low heat production because the system's idle the entire time. In fact, I would be surprised if this PC doesn't explode under full CPU load for both of those CPUs just due to the, uh, the cooling solution. But anyway, let's move over to two, which is one of my favorites, uh, PCIe storage. Now they're saying here, in our research, we found SSD storage to be a big bottleneck for the overall performance of a digital source. They're saying SSD storage is a bottleneck when it comes to storing FLAC files, like lossless music files. Uh, an SSD always connects to your system via motherboard DMI chipset. For the extreme, we're using PCIe modules, so just an M.2 NVMe drive, uh, which connects directly to the CPU because it uses PCIe lanes. Therefore, we achieve speeds up to four times faster than SSDs, which results in lower latency and much lower system noise, giving you black backgrounds, this is when it comes to music, black backgrounds, huge space rendition, and brings an ease to the musician's performance only matched by the very best vinyl and tape playback systems. So, I, I don't even know, I don't even know what to say about that because that's so ridiculous, but let's carry on. So they say they also rely on the new VMD technology that Intel introduces with their new Xeon CPUs, uh, and that allows them to even further reduce latency. And they say you can select anything from two terabytes to 24 terabytes, eliminating the need for playback from external drives such as a NAS. But this is, is where it gets really good, right? So they're saying, worried about backups, uh, we found that RAID is not beneficial to the sound quality. Why? What, like, what impact does RAID have on the sound quality of a music server? Like, I don't understand. Can they please elaborate here? Like, what? <laughs> so, okay, but then they say, therefore, we strongly recommend to our customers to use an external backup drive with this 24,000 euro music server. This server does not have redundant storage in it because it apparently affects the audio quality. So they're, they're bragging about it not having RAID in it. Like I, yo, the balls, right? It's, they don't even ignore it. They straight up brag about it. Like, okay. I think I've composed myself, so let's, let's move on to number three, which is selected high-speed RAM. Uh, now they say here, ever heard of DRAM refresh? You should, because it's one of the main reasons why many think fewer and lower speed DIMMs are better for sound quality. 
I have literally never heard anybody try and correlate RAM speed and audio quality before. I have literally never heard that before. But anyway, in our research, we discovered the true source of why RAM has such a big impact on Sonics and uh, were able to deal with it in our way. So the way in which they dealt with this well-documented problem that RAM screws up your digital audio <laughs> Uh, by using custom RAM modules that have factory pre-selected A-grade memory modules, uh, all DIMM components, memory chips, capacitors, resistors, etc. are matched to within a 1% tolerance and selected for low current draw. Uh, now I'm assuming, considering that it's a Xeon system, th th they're using ECC memory in here, but that, that sounds like it goes beyond that. And they're saying that the side effect of this is refresh rate burst current is reduced by almost 50%, and operating temperatures are much lower, allowing re lower refresh rates. Combined with power supply filtering, this allows us to use 12 memory DIMMs with a high combined bandwidth at a very low refresh noise levels. Noise levels. So they're saying that the combination of the memory modules and the power supply means that they can use 12 DIMMs. Like, it's because of the CPUs and the motherboard. What do you mean? <laughs> like, what is... What is... Uh... Okay. I, I think I've composed myself again. I think we're good. <laughs> now, in all honesty, I don't want to spend much more time talking about any of this stuff. It's just more non-specific marketing language about why this is the best music storage server ever and how they selected the capacitors in the power supply by ear and <laughs> all kinds of stuff like that. Uh, but under this, there are some outtakes from professional reviewers telling you how this system has just changed their life. They no longer have erectile dysfunction, they're happy, everything works, and it's the best music they've ever had from their system because of the Teco Audio Extreme. Um, but what, what's really interesting to me is under these pages of marketing material, you get to the specs of the Teco Audio Extreme, where suddenly they become really vague about all of it. They don't tell you exactly what the CPUs are that's in here. They don't tell you what speed the RAM is or what kind of RAM it is. They just tell you that it's industrial memory modules that are custom order. And that's the part that's, that's so crazy for me about the system is that when it comes to like unmeasurable non-specific stuff, they, they talk for hours about it. But the moment when it comes to actual specifications, they become very, very vague about it, which that is just dodgy. That's just weird full stop. So I don't know, this thing may lead to the best digital music audio reproduction that anybody's ever heard before, but this looks like some pretty crazy marketing to me right there, which I think is a very good point to end this video on. So thank you for watching. Please let me know in the comment section down below what you think of the system. And uh, yeah, until the next video, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.